Hello everyone, it's Mike from Little City Studios and I thought I'd do a new update on the Samurai game I've been working on. So uh, if you've been following this channel, you know I've been working on a kind of top-down isometric 3D Samurai game and let's give it a, a whirl here. So basically this is the prototype that I started polishing but um, now we've kind of gone back to work on some of the mechanics and get the code a little bit better. Uh, but this is the basic gist of it. You've got this samurai and you can do these slash attacks and kill all the enemies. So um, yeah, so the future of the game, there'll be more enemies than just these, but you can see from the attacks sometimes like limbs come off and obviously there's lots of uh, blood splatter and all these things. and. Um, in the prototype, I have a experience kind of collection type thing, kind of like a survivor's style game. Um, still working on the direction of the game and whether those things will be happening or not. But, um, but yeah, this is the basic game here. And let me show you what I've been working on. All right. Uh, so one of the problems with this game uh, that happened about two weeks ago is... I was trying to make a build for the game, and um, when I go to build it, there's some errors with the um, with a, a shader compilation. So, if you look here, you'll see all these errors. So, um, yeah, so that was kind of a problem. So I started like rebuilding the app from scratch because that was one of the recommendations people said just poured over everything that you have um, to a new project so um, I was thinking about that and I did that and I I found that nothing was causing that compilation error um, that I could put my finger on but I, I decided to take it as a uh, uh, a sign that it was time to maybe bring the project into a new you know a new phase so the code in the um, in the prototype is a little crazy, so um, I started kind of reworking the systems that I had and uh, cleaning up some of the the way that things are being done. So, um, and uh, and then I started adding new features. So now my code is a little bit crazy again. But um, some parts of this are actually a lot simpler. Um, so you can see here we have our input mapping. It's all part of this player base class. Um, we also create a HUD. Um, and we also have this thing called an, uh, a, a, a health UI and a health actor component. Um, so one of the things that I'm working on to kind of keep the code base sort of easy to manage is I have this, I have a couple different um, actor components. So I have a dash component and I have a base, uh, or not a base, uh, a health component. The health component has its own folder um, because it has its own UI. So I could take this and import it into a new project and drop it in, and I would have basically um, a working health uh, system kind of built right into my game um, with UI. So that's kind of why I built it that way. And then also I took all of the dash mechanics, and I've been playing around with this, so I gotta clean it up a little bit, but um, I think everything that's yeah in the main line is correct now. Um, trying to get the, uh, the reason why this is a little bit messy is because the tracing for the dash attacks, um, one of the old problems with the, um, the prototype is when we do something like this, we can dash right through walls and we can also dash like off, off the map. So, um, so I've been working on kind of making that not happen. So. Uh, so that's why this, there's a lot of sphere tracing trying to figure out what, what we're doing here. Um, and so I have some debugging code here, but this, this will get a little bit better. Um, and so, but anyway, this is all encapsulated inside a, um, an actor component, so the player doesn't need to know all the dash attack stuff. We can just add a component to it. And you can see here we have our, our input for the dash and, uh, we just um, we just fire this off and it's connected to the, the dash uh, actor component. Uh, and then uh, currently the player doesn't take any damage, but I hooked up uh, spacebar so that you can 
take damage. And then the, the last thing I've been working on actually is kind of re, reworking the controls for um, how the player can rotate and, um, and aim. So uh, I kind of want to do this in like a stick, twin stick shooter style. Um, but instead of a gun, you have a dash. Uh, and then that's a little tricky because uh, if you're using uh, two different control schemes like I'm trying to support, so I have controller and I also have um, mouse. So, all right, so excuse the graphics, I'm doing all, all, all in gray box to make this stuff work. But you'll see if I push left, I move left. If I push right, I move right. And my character controller turns to face the direction that I'm moving. All right, so that's kind of like what like Enter the Gungeon does or whatever. Um, and then for, for, for a lot of the games that have the dash mechanic, like Enter the Gungeon, basically you dash in the direction that you're, that you're facing. So, so you see here, he's, he's dashing in whatever angle he's going, right? Um, but I also like the idea of having like the ability to aim, right? So I have this little sword cursor. Again, this is all just prototype stuff, so like that, that's not my best uh, pixel art um, mouse sword. Um, but like I could aim my guy around like this with my mouse. So now he's, if I, if, so with mouse control right now, I have it set up so that if you hold down right mouse, you can kind of aim your guy wherever your mouse cursor is, which is this sword. So you can kind of, you know, hit, hit um, the guys, you know, as you're aiming. So. Uh, that's the mouse controller. And then this also works with the, um, with our, uh, our, our um, controller. So this is controller now. So I'm using a controller, if you can see on my camera. Um, and same thing, left stick controls kind of going forward, backward, whatever direction, right? Um, and any direction we push will rotate to get into that position. And then, same thing, if we're facing, we have a trigger button that will trigger whatever direction we're moving or facing, we'll do our dash attack, okay? Um, but we also have a right stick, so twin stick style, right? And what that does, if you're not moving anyway, it will follow the mouse cursor. So, um, so you can aim and and go and face the, the mouse cursor. Um, so that, that triggers whenever you move your, your stick. Um, I also have it set up so that if you hold down um, the left um, shoulder button, you can kind of like always be in aim mode. So I haven't tried this out with like my animations and stuff, but like you can see now I'm walking backwards, right? Uh, the arrows pointing only towards the thing. So anyway, it's, um, I feel like this, it's getting to a point where the, this style of um, control is actually not too bad for, for my, 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 what I've envisioned. Okay, so I think I killed all of the bad guys. Nope, maybe not. Um, so another feature that I've been working on inside the prototype, okay, here's another bad guy, um, is uh, kind of like setting up the levels. So. Once you kill everybody, then the game basically restarts, but uh, basically it loads a level. So currently it just loads the same level we've been prototyping on. So um, yeah, so those are the things I've been kind of reworking. So I'm getting close to the uh, putting the, you know, the graphics back in, um, but I just want to kind of stay in this gray box for a little bit longer. Um, I, I want to gray box a level, like a real level. and. Um, just kind of see kind of how that works. And then the other thing I'm working on is kind of a timing at, or like a timer for the levels. So like, oh, and um, basically the idea would be like, can you complete this level in a certain amount of time, right? So um, yeah, so so those are kind of where I'm, where I'm headed. And so I kind of want to get as much gameplay mechanics down as I can and get the code as clean as I can. Um, and then I'll move on to making it pretty again. Uh, one last thing I guess I could talk about is, as you saw, there was a lot of enemies running around on the screen. They're getting spawned in with uh, 
with these uh, spawn blueprints here. And basically they're just uh, overlap colliders and they just, um, am I in the right one? Yeah, enemy spawn. If the player hits the, the spawn uh, collider, then we, um, we spawn a enemy uh, from the enemy base class currently, but we could set this up to spawn all different types of enemies. And then um, we also register every, every enemy with the level manager. And that's how we can trigger the next level once we've killed off all the enemies. And it also keeps track of all the spawners so that if there are still like unspawned enemies, we don't like, uh, we don't finish the level prematurely. Um, but this, this can also work, the, the level manager can also work with like a, like an endpoint of the level, so you could like uh, still load the next level if you get to like the exit or something like that, depending on the the win criteria. I think I'm not sure I'm gonna have uh, the uh, the win criteria be get through level, but uh, you never know. So I'm keeping it open for that. So yeah, the level manager uses some event triggers for when the enemy dies. We we check and see. Did we make it? And then we complete the level. And completing the level is literally just loading the next level or whatever level I have here. Um, and then at the beginning, we find all the spawners and we we also watch all the spawners for when they're destroyed so we can remove them from the list. Um, and the other cool thing uh, that we've worked on with our enemies is, this is not the enemy, this is spawner. Um, yeah, we have the base class for the enemy, which, uh, is not as complicated as the old one. And right now, it all it has is a, in it is a uh, health class, or a health component, um, which gets affected by this damage piece here. And uh, we also, when we're doing our health, we return whether the um, whoever has the health component is dead or not based on the health change. And then if, if they die, we trigger this event here, which can fire off a event dispatcher uh, which triggers the, the level manager stuff. And then we also, I'm doing kind of like a pseudo ragdoll here. So um, just to kind of keep the idea of it going because we're going to have this basic code in here. Um, so I'm going to think about how to clean this up and see like, you know, where do, where do we put this? Because I don't think it has to be in the event graph. Maybe we'll do a, a function for that. Um, and then it also like turns off the AI, which we have new AI. So. Let's check that out. Okay, so in our game, oh, I think it's all under characters, enemies. So we have our enemy base, right? And then we also have this AI system. And so we have a new AI controller, a blackboard, a blue um, behavior tree, and uh, one behavior task that just finds the, uh, a location for the enemy. So this used to all be done in Blueprint, and now we have it set to kind of do it in this behavior tree, which will allow our enemies to kind of do a little bit more interesting things. So right now they just chase or randomly run around and they do more randomly run around than anything. Um, so this all needs to be tweaked, but, um, but it is pretty cool. Um, and it has this thing here to kind of like determine whether they can see the enemy or whether they can see the player, things like that, um, which is probably why they're constantly just finding a new patrol point. Um, cause the line of sight I feel like is not super great. Um, but yeah, we have this. And if you look back at the, the sword game version of this project and you go into the enemy base here, you'll see the random patrol here is all done inside a, an event inside the blueprints. And then we have pawn sensing, which checks to see if we can see the player. And then it randomly decides whether to chase the player or not. Um, so all of this has been changed to go to the to use the behavior tree system, and so like this is the the current version of the prototypes um, uh, enemy blueprint, and then in the new version of the game, right, we have like pretty minor um, stuff right now in our enemy blueprint. So. Um, and of course, this is all going to get more complicated as we decide what needs to go into the enemy and what needs to be somewhere else. Um, and we haven't even worked on attacks and we haven't worked on like how to handle the enemy death, but it's a lot cleaner. Um, it's, you know, using some of the better Unreal Engine pieces as well. So, uh, yeah, I think that is everything that we've 
we've built. So like I said, the next kind of thing on my, my, my list of things to do um, is definitely uh, build out a gray box level that sort of mimics kind of an idea of what the, what the level should look like. And then uh, adding the ability for the enemies to attack the player so that we can uh, take damage. Cause right now the only way to take damage is to press space bar. So you can see my, my health is going down. I don't even think the player can die actually, but anyway, we have to add, that's kind of the next piece. So yeah, enemy attacking and, uh, and a gray box level. So that's what I'll be working on next week. And I stream every morning at like 6.30 AM. Um, yeah. And then uh, we'll see how far we get, but uh, yeah, I would like to get Obviously, I'd like to get the game back to to looking nice, like like the prototype here, and then. Uh, but once we get some of the main main mechanics back in and the graphics back in, and a couple levels, I'm thinking we can set up a demo for people to play. So. Uh, so yeah, if you're interested in the game, then definitely subscribe to this channel, and uh, eventually we'll have a demo and a place the wish list so all right thanks for watching